What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode, what is this, 176 of Value Town. I'm Shaman V, and joining me today are Gara, of course, in a very, your, your chair looks like super white today. I don't know, I don't know why it is, but <laughs> it's like glowing today, it's the sunlight or something. Uh, and then uh, Dr. J, of course, our guest today. What's up? Welcome back. Hey, how's it going, man? You know, that chair is just glowing. It's glistening in the new card expansions. You know, yeah. it's new card expansions just highlighting Gara. She's ready to talk about some new cards. <laughs> you know, I, I was going to let Gara introduce you as the HCT Oakland champion, but, you know, he... he just, I don't know. Do not, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're going to be talking about HCT Oakland, but, um, you know, obviously Dr. J was there too, so we, we'll we'll definitely catch up with him on that. Easy but, top four. Yeah, easy top <laughs> Four. Easy. Not at all. Easy. Not at all. <laughs> Easy top four, man. Like the, that is definitely the, <laughs> no, the opposite of no what it is. Nowhere close. The semis happens. <laughs> yeah, we were. We, we, no, we were. We, we got four points. Like I guess that counts for something. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. No. Um. But this week, guys, you know, we we're doing it a day later. You know, that, thanks for. Uh. You know, I guess folks watching and being patient with us just had to move the show one day, but. Uh, not too bad. We've had a lot of news come out with the expansion this last week. A lot of new cards revealed too, so we'll be covering those today. Uh, and then uh, you know, maybe just take a look at what's what's going on a ladder, just because you know all of this is going to wind down. The expansion is going to come out pretty much at the beginning of the next ladder season too. So this will be the the last of the Witchwood um, meta, which has been very unique. You know, so. Um, are we can Hearthstone start out that, and we I think we can kind of cover the meta part uh, at least just generally which, which would and everything. So, um, Doctor J, you were at Oakland obviously this this past weekend. Um, in terms of like the event meta, like where do you think we are with that? Is it just like completely established at this point, and it's just a matter of just just rotating, you know, or, or just trying to guess what each event's going to uh be and like or at least which lineup or which type of lineup category of lineup is going to be the the one to pick just because of i mean it could be a little bit of just randomness to be honest like what everybody brings i would say in uh, my opinion that i think we've reached a point in the meta where it has finally stabilized and it has finally mm -hmm. we know the best decks right we know that druid is a very powerful class we understand that druid has three archetypes that are very good Two of them uh, seem to be more powerful recently than others because one of them has fallen to the wayside. I'd say that's Taunt Druid and Tournament has fallen to the wayside. It's typically only in the greedier lineups. Uh, mm -hmm. Shaman is still very strong because, especially in HCT Oakland, it was a phenomenal bring because most of the players were playing control decks. And Shadow Rock Shaman, of course, just has a reputation for being so well against those decks. There was a lot of Priest. There was a lot of Warrior. I think the most common lineup was the lineup that I actually brought to the tournament, and it was the Taunt Warrior... Mali Ghost, Druid, Control, Priest, and also the um, even Warlock, or some kind of Warlock like Q-Block that would also be strong against like typically the more um, like Token Druid and uh, Odd Paladin. So I'd say that the meta is pretty stabilized. I think one of the craziest things that come out of HCT Oakland is the, I guess, the revival of Quest Rogue. You, see, you saw yeah. Tare win the entire tournament with it, and there were some other players like Killing All Day, I know, brought it as well. And um, I actually was trying to prep with them beforehand, and I thought about bringing it myself. And I said, you know, I don't have near the experience that these guys have on the tech, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and bring something more comfortable and try and uh, yeah. win that way. But I think it's just a matter of like now we're in the rotational phase of a format where uh, most of the decks are solidified, and what happens is players choose all right, control this tournament is more popular, so let's go anti control or let's go aggro, and it's just kind of guessing what you think the field is going to bring based off location and then where the cycle is in the meta. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty interesting. The all aggro lineup, like, how has that just been fading, basically, the last two um, the, the two events? Because, I mean, it did pretty well last event, too, right, before HCT Oakland. And yeah. then I don't know actually how it fared in Oakland, though. I don't think, I don't think it's that it uh, actually is disappearing. What I think it was is you saw it do very well and HCT Italy, mm -hmm. and since it did very well in HCT Italy, people were thinking about t uh, countering it yeah. for HCT Oakland, and that's where you saw that meta shift, right? You see Agro do very well in Italy, and the next tournament is immediately Oakland. Well, then people start to bring control in Oakland, yeah. that which means that uh, the anti-control lineups do better because they hit less Agro and they hit more control. So that's that just like basically personifies the, the cycle that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. 
It's always interesting seeing just how the event meta is um, compared to, say, the ladder meta. It, obviously, very different formats, so it's, it's not supposed to be similar. You know, like it's going to be very different when you can ban a deck and, and have just a group of card, you know, decks to, to pick pick and choose between. But, you know, one thing I saw in the ladder this last week, Gara, is just that Death Rattle Hunter has just gotten really popular. Um, maybe not at the top of Legend, but definitely in the Legend ranks, it, it's it's gotten just a, a boost in popularity. So, um, what's your thoughts on the Death Rattle Hunter? I mean, we don't see it in tournaments much, you know, like if if any. So it's definitely not up there, I would say, in terms of the the top decks, you know, to try to to win in a last year of standing or or even a conquest at a tournament. But um, w your overall take on that deck is it good? Uh, it's just okay. Uh, I, I just think that um, big streamers have a very big influence <laughs> on the meta. Yeah. With like, I know that Zale is like streaming Hunter every day for like nine hours, like Death Rattle Hunter. And a lot of people, you know, watch and just try to copy it and yeah. make, try to make it work. And this is how we, we get these periodically meta shifts, like artificial meta shifts. And then it goes back to normal. Like, it's like when someone, everyone suddenly decides to play Zoo for no reason. And a lot of same. people it's decide like, to play Zoo for no reason. Yeah, you are still playing Zoo <laughs> yeah. for no reason. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah, what is happening? A, a, a lot of people are playing Zoo, dude. Look <laughs> like at this. Okay, as you can see right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! What are we doing? Oh, oh sorry, okay, sorry, about that. sorry about that. For production, production. Uh, but yeah, it's like it's like when dog, you know, decides to basically create a meta on day one, and then suddenly everyone plays like the dog quest rogue, whatever. Yeah. I think something similar is happening with Hunter. There's no real particular reason. I think people just get bored of the currently tier one decks because they're the same tier one decks for such a long time. We have Maligos Druid, we have like Everlock, and uh, yeah, Odd Paladin, and like you play them for months and it's just pretty much the same decks. You just yeah. want to mix it up. You Like Shadow Rock Shaman all the time. You just want to play different decks that are like maybe a bit weaker, but they're different. <laughs> and so a lot yeah. of people suddenly play hunter what's funny is like you know all these nerves we've had and a whole another expansion too and in the end in the end it's tried and true <laughs> paladin's still on top i mean he's by he himself started this expansion with he's paladin. by himself yeah by but golly we're ending it with paladin <laughs> i mean he is by himself it's like one of the few classes that literally only has one viable deck but it's still you on top which is crazy Another great, yeah, yeah. Like this this week, I, I let out a lot because I didn't go to Auckland. I got like top 10 with Marigos to it on one server. And yeah. the other server, I, I played Odd Paladin. I can say, like, pretty much for the first time, dude. I played like Asia top 50 with Odd Paladin, and it was so easy. Like, it was so smooth <laughs> sailing. Like, I've literally learned the game while I was like learned to play deck while I was playing. Learned the game. It's, There's not much to learn, dude. It's so <laughs> strong for no reason. I feel like, yeah. man. It's just way too powerful, for sure. See, I'm actually on the other end. I think Odd Paladin's weaker than most people give it. Like, yeah. I think it's actually weaker. Like, well, it's not I, good. I've had so many games with Odd Paladin where I'm just like, I, I can't do anything. I just lose. <laughs> I, I like the Void Troopers. I think it changed the deck. I do think it makes it a lot better. Which one? Definitely. Oh, the Void Rippers? Yeah, that's definitely Void been. Ripper. That's definitely been. A, a, I, it's not even just that deck, right? I think Void Rippers just been being used uh it's kind of like the new addition right to a lot of uh to to being able to handle certain types of decks right just because there's a lot of but, health but touching up on the point decks. of being bored i played a lot of control warlock and a lot of even paladin on around top 100 and it was pretty good it's just that you get bored of the existing decks it's all the same decks. i mean you know, like... you know i was just talking about the death round 100 the death round 100 is pretty fun to play yeah, it's, exactly. it's definitely a lot of fun to play. So I highly recommend that for people listening. So is like, Zoo. Zoo was fun to play too. Yeah, Zoo's, Zoo's not that fun to play. Zoo's just oh, fun. Oh yes, to it is. It's fun have winning. You ever, it's have fun you winning. ever gone Cobalt Librarian coin <laughs> heal your face in a double happy? Okay, goal. okay. The minute I, you do I, that, I, you'll understand what. Okay, fun I'll is. give you that. I'll, I'll give you the, the, the crazy heal of combos. <laughs> yeah, quite yeah. a few times. <laughs> And you can kill us if it's well on turn two. It's <laughs> Why not? Good. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. I don't know. I have to throw fun. in. I have to throw in Glinda for the hell of it, just to make my, just to make <laughs> me have even more fun with Zoo whenever I'm playing. Now Zoo's good too, and you're gonna win plenty with Zoo also. So yeah, it's always fun winning. People but, love um, fast decks, dude. Yeah, yeah. But Paladin, look at Paladin right there, and then let's look at the popularity of Paladin. It's like 
you know, way down there. <laughs> like nobody really cares that much about it. And so, uh, it's definitely always interesting to see popularities. Um, okay. Well, anyways, that's kind of ladder meta and, um, you know, we still got about what, 10, 12, no, 12 days left in the, uh, ladder season. So, um, you know, I haven't heard many people talking about the latter season, just obviously with all the expansion oh, stuff coming out. This is like the month that. So is this month? I wonder is this the is this the month that like people generally get higher like than the, than the the normal people that are are like is there less attention on the ladder during during these expansion announcement months? Like is mm -hmm. is it possible for people to get higher than they normally would during this time? Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily that it's an expansion announcement. I think part of it is that a lot of players in certain regions feel they don't need points, so there's no reason to grind oh, it out. Like for instance, for yeah. instance, we do have this new four-month system where yeah. they take the highest three and they drop the lowest one. So a lot of players, like maybe they have already three top 50s or two top 50s yeah. and a top 100, and they go, all right, I'm safe. Um, if you're up, you need three top ones to be safe. <laughs> but like, so maybe it's just the fact that people are feeling, maybe people are feeling a little bit safer. So there's no reason to climb. I don't think it's necessarily expansion. But one of the things that the last, uh, I would say the quote unquote last month to get points for is it makes certain servers just very hectic. For instance, like I can't, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be excited for when the America server is the last server and then every single player and their family members and their mothers are just on that server playing just to try and get like the top 50 because they need those last extra points to qualify for their region. And it's going to just be so hectic because I, so many players are going to be playing because this is the last season to get a point. So it's all, it's basically like I need top 25 or I'm not finishing. So they just keep playing till they get there. Right. Right. There's no, there's no camping at this point. Like people are already like, all right, I need this amount so of this points. Is, this is where it's I need the to complete be. opposite. Then there's just like a ton and, of people and the playing. The thing is, with Europeans, yeah. Europe is such a try-hard region that yes. people try hard at the first three months. So most people have the three <laughs> months locked in. So they they're not like, yeah, I'm gonna be lazy the first month and then you know try hard the last month. Most people already locked up the three months. And yeah, see, that's the American way. Is we 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 were lazy the first couple months. They're like, wait a minute, all right, now we need our finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Okay, well, yeah, so good luck to everybody on their, you know, this this last ladder season for uh, you know, the Witchwood and obviously all the uh people that have HCT implications. Hopefully your dreams come true, you know, for this season or at least for this uh summer season, right? Um but uh in terms of the uh, expansion there was been there's been a lot of news because you know it, this has been before the actual community reveals you know a portion of of the pre-expansion so we've been hearing a lot from the blizzard team because the blizzard team has been slowly um you know revealing some and you know we had that one i think it was kobolds and catacombs right where we had like literally four straight weeks of community reveals i think like twice a day or something like that or maybe three times a day and then last time was it the same I'm trying to remember in the Witchwood if it was like four weeks again. Um, this time, for sure, it's only two weeks. And it, and it looks like the Blizzard's, you know, like occupying that first week with just their own, you know, reveals. So I'm trying to um, I'm trying to remember if Witchwood was four weeks or not. I, I don't think it was. I think KNC was so great. I remember everybody loving just Kobolds and Catacombs and, and really the pacing of the reveals. Uh, and then... Yeah, I can't. I I'm having a hard time remembering exactly how which would win. I mean, it was good, whatever it was. It just was. I don't know if it was exactly the same. But with this, you know, they they definitely announced uh, the card reveals recently, and it's basically two weeks of it. And then we're gonna get the, um, you know, the big stream. It looks like on, um, if you look at the schedule, the last day is like August first. So it's probably gonna be later on august 1st or you know maybe august 2nd or something i don't know that's kind of what it looks like at least these are the last two unless there's like another week coming or something but um but the, since the expansion's on the 7th i don't think so right so there's got to be something big coming out but anyways they you can take a look at this you can kind of see who who has the reveals based on just kind of mousing over them and i can let you guys know that we actually have one for the hs replay uh net and streamer showdown kind of doing a joint one so I'm um, excited to let you guys see that. Uh, and that's going to be a little bit later in this month. Um, 
the 31st. It's a very interesting card, so uh, definitely keep your eye out on that. But we're super excited, and it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, but overall, so far, just you know, we're going to get into like the, the the specific cards. You guys like the themes so far for um, the the Boomsday project? I mean, you liking the uh, magnetic stuff and um, just so far what you've seen with with just the science you know peter whalen had the the video today just talking about the theme of science for this one <laughs> uh i i find it like i don't know the the whole magnetic thing is kind of like basic is something that we've already seen in the game it's basically just like an indirect battle cry it's kind of like a um a power upgrade uh power creep of vanilla minions basically it is i like it it will be strong it will see play for sure because it's like a power creep but it's not like wow like it doesn't blow me away it's not like too new we had max already in the game you know how max work they have usually like synergies it's just like different max with like a little bit different synergies um yeah it will be powerful see play but it yeah, I, I was like too excited about the team uh, but with that said, like the legendary devs uh, shown and the cards they've just sh shown like one hour ago, the new Druid legendary that mm -hmm. I just looked at, and uh, very interesting, very cool. Like the legendary seemed to be uh, the, a lot of thought went into those, I think. And yeah. I'm pretty sure they haven't shown us like the, the coolest cards yet. So uh, the hype is not quite here yet, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they will have some aces up their sleeves. Especially with the legendary spells. Yeah, I mean, the, I I think I've been happy with the legendary card so far. Usually by now, I'm like disappointed by a lot of them because I've always wondered why they release some of these in the order that they do. But so far, I mean, I, I've been pretty excited about. I mean, the the legendaries have been powerful. You know, like I haven't seen too many legendaries that I wouldn't want to get in in my packs this time around. Where in the past, yeah, they were definitely like, oh, brother. I don't want that one. Like, don't give me that one, please. If I open it or if I get that free free legend, don't give me that one because that's that's the one that's gonna get dusted if I get. But um, uh, I kind of agree with the magnetic thing too. Like, I, I I'm on the fence about that. Um, it kind of like the more and more I see of it, you know, the the more it sounds better to me. Uh, but it's starting to I don't know. It it, it kind of feels like it feels weirdly kind of like build a beast to me in a weird way it's like build a mech type of thing but it's just done in a in a you know more of a a, a buffing mechanic type of um, fashion but in the end you know I, I think that thinking about what you know these mechs will look like when they are buffed is kind of part of how you're going to build decks too right like seeing what kind of plays you're going to be able to make versus just like general value plays that you know maybe you do in, in like an arena but not not in standard so, I, Dr. J, like, how about you? What do you think about the magnetic cards? Like, are you, are, are you going to be thinking about it in terms of deck building and, and plays made that way? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know. Just kind of go through the intricacies I of that. I think overall magnetic cards, they, in theory, they seem solid, right? Mm -hmm. In theory, it seems good because, like, uh, a card that reminds me of magnetic is something like uh, Spike Ridge Steed. Like, that card is yeah. inherently kind of like, it's a buff spell which is kind of what Magnetic is, and that is a very powerful card when put onto a minion. So I think Magnetic has a lot of potential, um, and I think it will be pretty strong. The only issue I can see with Magnetic is how good are the standalone mech cards that right. can be mag magnetized, I guess. <laughs> I guess we're going to go with that. How good are <laughs> the standalone mech cards that can be magnetized, right? Like the 2-mana 1-5 is solid. Don't get me wrong. You can play that on 2, you just get a 3-mana Magnetic, and then you keep trucking but if there's if that's the only one and i'm sitting there looking at these magnetic cards and they're not really buffing anything and i'm just playing them as standalone minions well they have to be good standalone minions on their own yeah. and from what i've seen they've been like okay but not quite there so it's gonna be interesting to see how good they are standalone versus how good the standalone minions are to buff with them yeah so i i like the idea of it i think it's going to be good um the question you just have to ask yourself is like in the current meta, because you can't put this magnetic card onto anything. You have to ask yourself, how good are they standalone, and how good are they when they get put onto something? Yeah, and so it, it it does bucket, you know, where it can be good because, like you said, it can only be good with max. 
I kind of feel like they they need a card that has like a mech token, or you know, or like a death rattle that has a mech just to, to help with maybe the consistency of it. Because most of these mechs just they don't have great bodies. Like some of them won't won't stick around, you know. And even if they do have a lot of health, I mean, people are using Void Ripper now, so it's just like you know, I think people can you know even get by those type of minions pretty quickly. Honestly, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. Okay, sure. All right, I always make a bold prediction at least one value town. All right, that's that's the rule of value town making bold predictions. Yes. Um, I would not be surprised if one of the either the warrior class card or one of the spells reads like it, like I would. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if a warrior class card had an aura effect and it just said all your minions were mechs. Like I yeah. would not be surprised. Yeah. Like that, that makes sense. That doesn't like that would be pretty, or maybe a one of the legendary spells is like for the rest of this game, your minions are mechs, and then you just keep going to town with magnetic. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they do something like that. I know what it is, Dr. J. It's it's the amalgamator, <laughs> which yeah, yes! makes, makes the everything, amalgamator. yeah, makes everything all classic. Amalgamator 5000. That's just... right, that would be awesome, <laughs> totally awesome. Uh, okay, but anyways, kind of getting into some more of the news. Uh, so we have, yeah, that we have all those card reveals. We also have um, the announcement of these pre-release fireside gatherings. You know, pre-release parties. I think is what they're calling them for the Boomsday Project, uh, which is pretty awesome. Like they they basically selected a few uh, big fireside gathering um, taverns. You know, like the the people who have been basically doing these for a long time and do very very big ones. So. Uh, I think there was one by you. There's usually, yeah, the cave. The cave is obviously by yes, you, right? Yes, uh, that's 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 the one by me. Yeah, so it's like these are very like, you know, very um, common. <laughs> you know, like you've seen these most of these places, and uh, there's actually one down here in Florida, which is cool at the full sale. But esports arena, the cave, you know, meltdown in, in Toronto. Like you've seen a lot of these, and in Europe, there's there's some. There are mostly meltdowns, but um, they're they're obviously uh, some of the biggest uh, fireside gatherings too. Well, you can actually go there on the weekend of August 4th and 5th, and you can actually open your packs early, which is like, what? <laughs> That's like super cool, right? Because I guess at that point, you kind of know all the cards, so it's not, there's nothing to be surprised. <laughs> so you get a chance to open your, your decks early. I'm not sure how that happens, like how that works with the packs. Yeah, would you be allowed to play them on the ladder system? Or is no, it you can't play them. You can't play them. And you're like, oh, these are cool. Yeah, exactly. And you set them with... It's like it's like a Christmas morning where you see the presents just sitting there and you can't open them, and you're just like you're just like looking at the presents, admiring them, like thinking about the RC car you're about to get. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can't open it. Or it's <laughs> like I remember there was one Christmas my parents let me actually open my presents like on Christmas Eve, but I couldn't actually play with them until. Christmas oh, Day. That's, that's what this. That's is. That's what this is, man. This is totally the same thing. <laughs> but uh it's cool you mixing it up giving these uh events you know this kind of cool opportunity I, I i've always felt that there was always something missing from in, from the standpoint of the release parties and you know the the firesides just being able to leverage the firesides because the release parties whenever they were doing special events it would just be in you know it would just be in in uh irvine you know for the most part so only people local could partake in them where nobody else, you know, in the world could do anything and celebrate the expansion. So th this is kind of a way to do that uh, and just have more of a global celebration, which is really, really cool. So, yeah, definitely see if you can, um, you know, make your way to some of these places. I'm sure they're going to, a lot of people are going to be there. And uh, there's also a, the, a special brawl, too, a fireside brawl that will be available at the event if you, if you go. Um, so, yeah, I might have to see... I think I'm going to see if I'm in town that, that weekend or not. But yeah, making my way up to Orlando. Winter Park is in Orlando, if you guys are in Florida. Um, really, really exciting there. Also, one one thing is um, currently we are in the Midsummer Festival, which we had, um, I think, last year, right? We, we did the Midsummer yep. Festival last yeah. year, too. And um, pretty cool that they're, they're doing it again. So... Um, uh basically you know during this stuff you you can expect getting certain double things gold. For, yeah double gold double gold for one what did we get last year i mean i'm trying to remember uh double gold. for sure we is got it double, double gold, gold? Is as it just, well is that it i don't know what else we got oh i could have sworn there was more stuff to it like obviously they're gonna be some i mean there's the like, wow emote thing where it's uh it, the, you play the fireside brawl and it yeah. charges your wow emote that way when you want to be him on ladder it's just more explosive yeah okay uh <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, so and I think there's like a special brawl too, or going to be some special brawls so, there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so just some, something little, but uh, pretty cool that they're doing it again. Um, let's see what else is there in terms of news. Um, yeah, the launch, the launch, you know, I, I'm not sure if it was last week or we just weren't sure, but the launch is officially August 7th now. So, um, you know, I think we, we know that and we can kind of time that out. It's going to be exciting to, to get started in that. Um, but I think that's it, at least from the standpoint of Blizzard and, and some of the things that they have announced. But let's get into the cards. Uh, in the notes, guys, I, I didn't get all the cards in the notes, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look at some of the <laughs> the ones that I've seen, or or hop on a you know one of the, the the links or sites. I'll link you in a second. But uh, let's get into yeah, just reviewing some of the cards because that's always the the super fun part of uh, <laughs> this time of season. So we're gonna start with um, let's start with just the um, neutrals, and then we'll get into the class cards because. I think the neutrals are um, pretty interesting too, but uh, there's there's like five of them, I believe, or, or four of them. Okay, so I have four of them right here. Okay, so we've got War Gear. That's magnetic, five mana, five, five mech. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got upgradable frame bot. That's a one, five mech, two mana. Uh, and then we got Zilliax, five mana, three, two mech, and it's a legendary. And it's a magnetic that gives you divine shield, taunt, Life steal and rush, which is like wow, amazing. And then uh, the last one is a is one that they announced today, which is a four mana four five whiz bang. Uh, was it the wonderful? The start of oh, wait, 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 you start the game with one of whiz bang's wonderful decks. So he gives you one of the uh, gives you a deck from the deck recipes, and uh, you know he takes over your hero too, which is like you know whiz bang. I guess the hero is, is pretty cool. Um, all right, so anyways, let's talk about these cards. Uh, maybe start with the most like straightforward ones, which is like I would say War Gear and Upgradable fr Frame Bot. Any thoughts on these cards? Like, are, are these cards that you would think? I mean, are, would you think about even playing at this point? And just kind of looking at them, Gara. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're like very nice stated, uh, especially for the magnetic um, tribe effect, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. You want to have like a very high HP sticky minion in the early game and the the two mana one five is just perfect for it. Uh it alone is not good enough. So I hope we get like a diamond or something as well, like a one mana one free mech. Mm -hmm. If you have that, I'm not sure if that is enough, but that's a very good starting point. If this is like the only early game mech we have, then it will be yeah, too weak, too inconsistent. But I just hope, I just expect that we will see. Uh, more early game max, but this is from yeah th for this being the only revealed mech in the early game so far this is like very very good and it looks like very promising that this um new you know mech mm -hmm. tribe will see play for sure okay. that's good dr J, do you think the war gear five mana five five buff basically or or you know you can play it as a five body is that good like I, I think if it's played as a body, it's mediocre and bad. I think if it's played as a, as a buff, it's really good mm -hmm. because it kind of reminds me of Blessing of Kings, right? Because Blessing of Kings is four mana plus four four, and uh, this one is five mana plus five plus five. So if you put this onto something and give it charge, I think it is very powerful. However, if you're just playing a five mana five five, that's barely under the stat line for what's considered. Like reasonable stats, I think reasonable stats for a five drop. I think it's considered pit fighter, which is a five mana five six. Like reasonable stats that you would actually consider putting in your deck. So I think overall, if you can guarantee this hits a mech, it's pretty solid. But if it doesn't hit a mech, I think it's pretty weak. So the the question with this card is, how often does it hit a mech? And it's very hard to tell when we only have the upgradable frame bot right now as reference. Um, and to, just uh, just a comment, I believe on magnetic, I'm pretty sure if you magnetize something, I'm a patent this word, so when people start saying magnetize, they can give me royalties. <laughs> when you magnetize something, I think if you silence it, it goes back to the original stat line. So if you magnetize the upgradable frame bot, I think it goes back to a two mana one five, but I could be wrong on that. It makes sense. Like whatever was the original body should be what remains, you know, versus picking the better of the two or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so let's talk uh, about Zillow. Okay, go ahead, Cara. Do you have one last? I just one? yeah, I was thinking about it a lot. Like how much it would change if you could play Blessing of Kings as a four mana four four. Like, would this card be much better? Because right now you would like. With, with this all even and odd teams that we have going on, it seems very easy to always have a body where we can put Blessing of Kings on and you would probably always go for the buff effect and never as a standalone because it's just better. You basically give a minion charge and yeah. Magnetic has a very big downside that you have to buff a mech. I think it's kind of overlooked that uh, the flexibility of buff cards that you, you can basically put it on anything and it might be just too big of a downside that it won't see too much play. Yeah, uh, but I forgot to say it yet. It really comes down to if the the most powerful max uh, or my yeah max, what kind of effects those will have, and they they, they usually tend to be a, a class specific max. Yeah, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually have a legitimate question. So the way magnetic works is it buffs the leftmost mech, correct? It buffs the mech on the left hand side of the minion, correct? Or does it not matter? Does it not matter what, what side it's put on? Uh, I think you can target it for placement. Like when you like, because for instance, if you put this in between two mechs, right, it's only going to buff one of the mechs, correct? So my question is, if you have one mech on the board, is there a way you can place it where you can actually choose to get the five five body over the buff, or no, do you always thanks. have to take the buff? I I believe you have to. That's a good question, actually. That would make it because, so much more interesting. Because I uh, I remember I remember if there's I remember someone reading it or seeing it somewhere that it buffs either the right or the left minion. So my question is, because if you have two mechs, you can only buff one, right? Right. So if you place it to where you buff the certain one you want, of course. But is there a way if you only have like? one mech you can place it to where you get the 5-5 five, five body and i think the blessings of king's argument is a great statement because the flexibility of being able to play this card out as a 5-5 five, five, if you really need to makes it very strong okay so somebody in the chat said the left side is always the buff and right um, side is standalone yeah so you can actually play this like let's say you, you can switch it you can switch it right yeah or or i mean if you placed it on the right it doesn't buff it doesn't buff but does the let's say you have two magnetic ones, right? So let's just say you played one standalone first, and then I guess it's the same either way. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. So okay, so you have to place it basically on the left uh, for you to actually get the buff. Um, I mean, there there probably is some some use case where you you don't want to, right? Uh, you know, just you want to get that taunt, right? Like you were saying. So um, that's kind of interesting. I kind of wish that Framebot had mag magnetic too wait can you silence it <laughs> that would be sick man uh, can you silence, can you silence it yeah yeah you can, silence it. You can yeah. break the the well if you break the buff it just becomes a standalone right what happens if you silence? like <laughs> this two drop plus the five drop if they are right. combined and you silence it what happens i think it becomes back a one five right i don't yeah. think it splits apart That'd be you cool if it split apart. I know that would be kind of like, cool, but it's like, so cool <laughs> because, like, officially, <laughs> it's it. officially it's just attached to it, right? Like, yeah, if you couldn't it's... silence it, if it becomes a new minion, that would be insane. Yeah, then it's actually much better. It's like a kings that can't be silenced. Yeah, it's it's not though. <laughs> There's no way. Like, yeah. silence, These are silence all would lose. Phenomenal so much. questions. Yeah, These yeah. Are... No, I think silence <laughs> does like remove that that attachment basically. So. Um, it it's doesn't. Game, yeah, it, it is a game. I mean, Thailand's basically doesn't do much to it. Uh, that's what ends up happening. <laughs> it does next to nothing to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it becomes this buff and it's silent. Because it right? becomes a new meme. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, uh, moving on to Zilliax, we've got you know our, our first legendary mech. I think with magnetic. I th I'm not sure if we had one before that. Um, but this one is small body, so it's a five minutes. Uh, you know, kind of with a three two body, but it's got six keywords. on <laughs> it. You know, it's got magnetic <laughs> divine shield. Actually, no, it's got uh, five keywords: divine shield, taunt, life seal, rush, and this is all magnetic. So you can attach basically these keywords to any of the the mech cards. And um, too bad it's not wind fury and you know and, and some of the other yeah, things that you could do card, card sticker with. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. No, but um, still, you know, very very nice. The fact that you can rush and life steal this. You know, potentially is a, you know, again, like this is the kind of thing that makes me 
think of it like a build a beast situation, you know, like you just need to get some, some life back and, and you're able to kind of do that and you don't even hurt yourself, right? With the divine shield here. So, um, kind of expensive, but you know, those are really good keywords. What do you guys think? So I'm going to start. Um, the first thing that came to my mind is corpse taker in priest because you have like all these bajillion status effects for free. And the, the seven mana curator that draws you like a life steal, you know, or whatever one of these effects. Uh, but then again, I was thinking uh, like a mech priest, I absolutely can't imagine right now. Like if you had the mech priest way in the past, because we had like so many options to build one, you always have to like go back and look at your class cards and priest class cards are not really, you know, if you don't want to play a dragon, style of priest it's very hard to play it in a tempo-ish way and we don't have the mix now like you need just more tools to make it work so it's a great card for that imaginary deck we we can't build yet okay dr j uh i think it is a very it appears to be a solid card but the question is how much is everything worth right three attack on minions worth about one mana um uh, that's the way I like to break down cards sometimes. I, I like to look at them and I say, all right, if you put each of these effects by itself, how much is it worth? Mm -hmm. How would it be worth putting it all together? So if you look at it, I'm going to say plus three attack, plus two health, that's about one and a half mana, maybe two mana. So then you ask yourself, well, how much is Divine Shield, Taunt, Lifesteal, Rush? I think Taunt's not worth like anything. I think Lifesteal is probably worth about half a mana. I think Divine Shield's worth at least one mana. Okay. Rush is probably worth a little bit. Um, I think this card is solid, uh, but I think it, it's one of these, these cards are so hard to evaluate right now because we have not seen the full picture. We have not seen all the mechs that have been announced. Like Gar was saying, like, sure, mech priest could be a thing. Maybe they print some two mana 70-70 mech priest card that instantly makes mech priest, like, the biggest thing and makes every other deck look like it was nothing. So you never know. Like, this, they could just print some more mechs that make these cards just better. But as of right now, if more mechs get produced, I think this card is okay. I think it's solid. I don't know if it'll see competitive play, but I think it is like a decent card that could see competitive play. My favorite thing to do with this card is what I was telling you earlier, Chan Man was the Glinda Crow skin combo. Oh my God. Where you just you just play nope. this card infinitely and it's pretty great. It's broke <laughs> is what you mean, right? Uh no, so how many can you do? You could do I mean, if you do Glinda, yeah. it's the Glinda Mech Warper thing, right? So yeah, you go Glinda, Glinda Mech, Warper, Mech Warper, then you play Mech four Warper. more Mech Warpers. So you have Glinda, five Mech Warpers, and then you yeah. just play this card over yeah, and over so for zero infinite. mana infinitely. Yeah, so that's what we were. I mean, we were. This is the infinite combo. Well, infinite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not infinite because obviously the rope will 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 stop it eventually, but it's essentially <laughs> infinite in, in my eyes. Now, if you are in a solo adventure, it's infinite. Yeah, oh, okay, true. <laughs> true. In a solo adventure, yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm sure we'll see a YouTube video with, like, you know, <laughs> a billion, you know, so like health and or whatever the max is for health and, and uh, and attack. Phase. Yeah. But I, <laughs> I know, like, we were talking about earlier, it's just, like, it really annoys me that we can even do something like that. It just, you know what I mean? It's, like, it feels... Granted, it's not, like, an instant death. You know, it's not charge or anything like that, right? So it's not... It's not quite like that, but at the same time, it's it is a pretty silly combo, and and it is one of those things that guarantees you die, right? If if it does happen, and um, you know how hard is it to actually get, you know that that Glinda combo, you know like I, I don't three cards. It's yeah, three it, cards. it's only three cards, and you know Exodia, <laughs> we had needed more with Exodia. Yeah, I know. And you have know. infinite stats on the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just like Vike of Norwich Old Card. Yeah, so for me, I, I don't love that type of design. And, and they know about it. You know, like. They, but you have to play them in the right order. It. That's difficult. What is that? You have to play the cards in the right order. There's a skill aspect to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's not it's not the right order. You mean there's more APM involved because it's about how fast it's like who can get the record for the most stats on the board. I think maybe we can make that a challenge in Value Town. Who can get bro. the most Yeah, exactly. Everyone right? starts with ten mana and you play this out and whoever gets more stats by the end of it wins. Well you know what? That, that that might be one of the adventure modes. Maybe that's you know, remember they have like the, the different goals because they're all puzzles, right? This time around. 
Maybe it's like get exactly, you know, 1,532. Get exactly 5,370,202 snaps. Oh my God. It's like, can you imagine? That'd be hilarious. What was that, Gara? This is the first time server ping will matter. <laughs> Nobody yeah. ever talked about it. That's true. Up to this point. Until That's now. True. Oh, God. There's going to be a Reddit, there's gonna be a Reddit post that says, I lost my game because my server ping. <laughs> Just <laughs> <what it's laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. The refresh rate's not fast enough. No, it's like, no. Um, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> it's pretty, definitely one of the most interesting mech cards I've seen, um, you know, in terms of magnetic so far. Uh, and then lastly, we've got the Whizbang, the Wonderful. This is totally the, you know, I would say casual, accessible, fun, you know, card that, that allows people that doesn't, that don't have all the cards to be able to experience in some way. And the fact that they're using deck recipes, you know, the deck recipes aren't too good. You know, they're, they're generally just okay. Um, it, I think this is good. You know, I, I think this is a pretty cool card. Dr. J, you were saying like you like this card a lot, right? Oh yeah, I love this card. I mean, I think it makes the new player experience much better. I mean, I think for sixteen hundred dust, or if you get this as your free legendary, you can just craft this card. And just because a lot of players, I mean, obviously, I come from a competitive standpoint, so I think about cards and their competitive, like just the way they are viable from a competitive nature. And you look at this card, and obviously, I don't think it's viable in a competitive sense at all. But it's one of those cards that just a uh, new player like my like it's kind of funny my dad started playing hearthstone yeah and it's really funny to watch him play hearthstone just because he doesn't know what any of the cards do and he's like obviously it's not the most optimal turns and i have to turn my back and make sure he's not listening so he doesn't come in and like yell at me <laughs> 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 he doesn't play he doesn't play he doesn't play the best but like a card like this would just be great for him because then instead of like crafting all the cards he needs he just queues up this on ladder he gets to play whatever he wants and um, it's just a great thing for the new player experience. I mean, yeah. the fact that they have options to play, like, what is it, three deck recipes per class, and that's nine classes, so, I mean, 27 decks. Oh, like is, it, is it, okay, so right? it's only the pre-existing deck recipes. I'm pretty sure it's okay. the only pre, I'm pretty sure it's just oh, the pre-existing okay. deck recipes, so you'll have option to, what, 27 different decks that you could play? Yeah. But you get, you get one random, decks. though, right? You, you get one of three I mean, I don't know the logistics behind it. I don't know yeah. exactly how it works, but I know you it, basically the point is you get to play with all the classes and you get to play with all the cards. It doesn't matter what your collection size is, yeah, and it doesn't matter what cards you have. Um, you just get to play with them, which is, I mean, for crafting one card, it's great, yeah, for sure. Gar, what's your take? I think it's, yeah, exactly the same opinion. I think it's great. I wonder how it will actually like animate in the game, like. Oh, it's supposed oh. to take over your hero and then give you a new deck. <laughs> like, literally. So it's it's probably like, yeah. uh, it's probably like how, you know, what was it? Whenever, whenever, um, you used to do the adventures like Karazhan, how Prince Malkazar would come out and replace the hero. It's probably something just like that at the very start of the game. It's like, um, what's his name? Wizzle, Wizzle Bang the Wonderful. Wizzle Bang the Wonderful. Come, yeah. Whiz he just bang. comes out and he goes, oh, Wiz Bang the Wonderful and he goes, this is my deck now. Here you go, and then slams on the hero portrait and gives you a random <laughs> hero power, and then you're playing that deck. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be like cool challenges, like some guy reaching legend with this card. I think it's like possible that. too. That's the, that's I the know. funny thing. I think of this. Um, I think of this card as almost like adding a new game. Mo like it, it's like a a shortcut to a game mode. <laughs> you know, like I feel like you can create just these fun miniature events with this one card. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. Like like your dad, for instance, Dr. Day, right? Instead of having him go and, I mean, obviously he has to craft stuff, but even if you could just go and select the recipes, whatever, you know, like you don't have to do that. You just have to literally add one card to your deck <laughs> and you're automatically doing that now. So it's like a shortcut to do some of these things. And then, exactly. you know, you can do these fun things probably with your streams and at, at tavern brawls. And, you know, like it's pretty, it's definitely very, very, the utility of it is actually very good. The funny thing someone just pointed out is, um, uh, the funniest part about this card is, you know, everyone jokes about how you want to bring four warlocks to a tournament, you want to bring four druids to a tournament. You can finally do that. You can finally bring four so shutterwalk shamans or four quest rogues to a tournament, as long as the deck recipe is that certain deck, and you just hit it every single time. I mean, you just bring. <laughs> That's uh, to think about. It, it's so funny. Wait, wait it's so you funny. Bring... You have to choose class, it... though, don't don't you? You choose a class, but it, it's a random 
deck recipe, right? Like, I don't think it you, goes You can get class. four shamans. Oh, you can get, like... Oh, I thought it was deck recipes within that, that class. Is it? It changed oh. it. Oh, okay. So, maybe... I mean, maybe I mean, it is the class. Yeah, I don't, it, it I don't wouldn't make any sense. Right? Behind the card. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like so it would cool, be, like, though. a technical... Like, th there would be a technical collision there, you know, in terms of, like... Because you still have your, your class. It doesn't change your hero power, I don't believe. Um... But I think that makes the card better instead of worse if you can like limit the RNG to certain recipes. Yeah, but you can't get Shutterwalk four times. Kind of my my point. Yeah, like, you, you can't. That would be fun in a different way. But I yeah. think for people that you know are new new players but want to play a certain class, then it, if they can like navigate the RNG so they get like a warrior recipe, that's probably much better. But it would be funnier if you can get like four Shutterwalk shamans. <laughs> that would be so hilarious. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I want to say you're a random deck recipe. I, I mean, from what I've been told, apparently it doesn't even replace your hero. It just oh, starts as it your hero. Oh, it starts as your. Well, okay. So I, thought, it, I thought it actually replaced your hero, but yeah, that, that makes sense. It starts, starts as your hero. Um, because it's the first thing that happens, right, when the game loads up. Yeah, I, I, I didn't yeah. see that that very i didn't pay close attention to the very very beginning of the the game but what is super game cool game. is like when you submit decks to tournament someone should do it for fun because you can build the absolute worst trash deck with this guy in it yeah. <laughs> i mean it doesn't matter yeah. what else is in it right yeah, <laughs> like you it literally like, just we, throw this i mean in what do you ban like, what yeah. do you ban you have four we yeah. have four wonderful decks and it's like what do i ban <laughs> well so here's a question if i play this card and prince malgazar do i still get the five five extra cards <laughs> like even though if you're what, what is prince nakazar again it, it gives, just starts with five extra it gives you five legends yeah. right it gives you five well extra you're legends. the 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 starting recipe would have to have prince oh wait, i see what you're saying yeah yeah okay. but if you had prince malgazar in your original deck yeah but there's but the the five extra wait legends a minute aren't, aren't wait a minute recipe, it gets though. better it gets better oh, what God. if you have gen gray main in your deck <laughs> and it's all even cards and then you switch to the deck recipe do you start off with the even cost hero power, or <laughs> like a oh god, yeah. one man be oh, that's hurting. so cool. <laughs> Dude, imagine yeah. that. I don't think that cheat. happens. I think if you have this card in the deck, it just like, it automatically. Someone said you can only have this card in your deck, oh. so it's really a one card. Oh, deck. it's that's... a one card. Man, oh, I want to see the UI for that. All my fun. <laughs> I want to see the UI for that. All right, <laughs> you have to go to an HCT tournament. You forgot the deck submission. Here's Batman. You're five minutes left. What do you do? <laughs> That that's what it is. Oh, this deck. this was made for a tournament organizer. So your penalty is you have you can only play a Wizmang deck. deck. Oh, that would be so good. So it, it is one of the twenty-seven random deck recipes. Then, so you technically could yeah, have four yeah. war, uh, four warlocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so much better. Yeah, no, no. I'm just, I'm just. This is all just like fun talk, guys. In the end, you know, we know. <laughs> we know you can only have this. Wait, wait. Yeah. I have one more question before we start moving on yeah, to other yeah. cards and stop this meme fest that's going I, on. This, like everybody thinks we're serious about some what? of this talk. What no, class no, does this no. count as? Because if you only get this one card in your deck, can you actually submit this four times? Because technically, if it's a class card. Then you couldn't submit it four times because you no, take up not. one of your class slots. So you could it's submit not. this four times, I guess. You could submit it four times, but you still have to choose your class, though. I think. How do they know what class I am? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. These are all I mean, phenomenal like... questions that will get answered on August seventh. Yeah. Well, this is. These are all questions we don't even have to worry about because the deck recipe decks are not that great anyway. So. So, you know, the actual HCT tournaments, this will not happen, you know, like, <laughs> and, and I, I'm, I doubt Blizzard would even allow this card, like, to be, to be played in, in any of those. I think they will. I think they will. If it's not, if the red deck recipes are just, like, not powerful and there's no way to abuse any of the rules, then, yeah. That's yeah, why they're not going to limit it, right? Because yeah. there's no reason not to. Like, yeah, they're not yeah. So uh, people are not going to ban this card from an HCT tournament because there's absolutely no reason to. The deck recipes aren't uh, considered like as powerful as a standalone built deck. So if someone wants to hinder their HCT performance by bringing this card. Yeah. Like, sure they can. So they're not going to. HC uh, Hearthstone is never going to ban a card from competitive play in a tournament. That is just not the Hearthstone way. Yeah, yeah. But you have like faking a disconnect will is like as strong as ever. Because, like, if you disconnect, 
and you have to make a regame, you will have a different deck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> So you can that go would for be like, hilarious. Not to like a favorable matchup. Oh my god, well, let's be real. Nobody's gonna bring. I mean, it's gonna be complete meme if somebody if somebody brings it, and it, and it won't be like, you know, it'll be somebody like uh, what's his face that was at HTT Oakland. <laughs> the, what's uh, his name? What? Quanchi. Quanchi. <laughs> it'll be Quanchi playing the thing, and making headlines that way. But <laughs> you know, talking trash and <laughs> at the same time on camera. All right. Anyways, let's move on. We 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 seem to like <laughs> have have used up all the the possible um, comedy that comes from this this uh, card. But uh, the next few we have here on a let's see a more serious note. We've got uh, some class cards here. We got uh, a Paladin card that's called Anoyo Module. It's a four mana two four mech magnetic divine shield and taunt. Uh, we'll start with this one. So, um, okay, this is, you know, this is pretty solid. Uh, um, you know, we've seen the uh, two four, the three mana two four, right? If if there's if it's the only thing on the board, it gets the divine shield and, and taunt too. So this one's costs one extra, doesn't have that prerequisite, and it can be a buff too. So, oh, that sounds pretty good to me actually. <laughs> it's, anything with divine shield too is pretty dang. Nice. Yeah, I think this is one of the best magnetic cards um, that's been revealed so far, because uh, I think. Now that I understand the uh, magnetizing mechanic uh, better, that you can play it as a standalone minion or you can choose to magnetize your minion, um, I think this is actually one of those cards that really utilizes that to its fullest efficiency. So you can buff, you can take like a value trade with your mech minion and then you can put the Divine Shield on it and taunt. Or if you're worried about silence and you need multiple taunts on the board, you can play it as a standalone minion to try and like maximize the chance of you maybe living against an aggro deck. Or maybe just like, you know, you need that extra attack and a divine shield to kill off a larger minion. So that's just three applications right there that can be applied instantly. And it can be all played in different ways. And that's just, cards like this, I love. I mean, I it, it could be, it could be not even see, it could not even see play at all. Um, but from my initial thought, it seems very solid because it gives the player branching decisions on what they want to do with their turn. And it's also what appears to be a very solid card. And I love cards like this. And I'm very excited for this card. You guys remember yeah. Valen's Chosen? Yeah. <laughs> it's a, wasn't it two? Was it a two four? It's three yeah. mana buff two four. Two four, it's right? Okay. Four. Yeah. It's but it wasn't priest, which makes it a little <laughs> bit different. <laughs> this is like a million times but where we are two three years later. Uh, Gara, what, what's your thoughts? Um, I was thinking about like maybe even Mech Paladin will be a thing because the new oh, Tundra drop is going to yeah. be a Mech and That's this true. is like also an even cost card. You have to see more. I think if you if you get like another two mana Mech minion, then for sure. Because even Paladin is not so bad right now. It's just it has like a, some wacky um, cards you're playing right now just because there's nothing better. But I think the new two drop will definitely change a lot because two drops right now are really bad. And having a two mana one five is really really good yeah. against in the current meta, and uh, p uh, people definitely try to make this work. I mean, like the whole, like, this this body thing. by itself isn't even bad, you know. Like against certain aggro decks, yeah. I think it, it would buy you some some life. Or, it would buy you like five six. I don't know how much life, right? It's, it's pretty. It's kind good. of like that a uh, three mana two four card that we have now. Uh, yeah, I can't that's what, the name that's what I was mentioning, right? Head. Yeah, it, it was the it's the paladin. It's a paladin card too, I believe, right? Or no, it's a no, it's neutral, a neutral card. It's a neutral card. Yeah, there was like the, the the five mana neutron thingy. That was a five mana three four, uh, with yeah. divine shield. And that card but, saw a little bit of play. And it had no magnetic. Yes. Yeah, like people were picking that sometimes too, even from like Stonehill, right? Like so. Yeah, so it's much better than that. Yeah, yeah. I'm still picking it from Stonehill, Chan Man. <laughs> I'm still gonna pick it from Stonehill. <laughs> yeah, List King's all the way, dude. All right. <laughs> all right, next card. We got seven mana, three eight mech Brillium Nullifier. It's an epic magnetic. Uh, the last one, by the way, was a rare, the Anoyo module. Uh, but this one's magnetic, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. So, um, actually, it's gonna be a bit of a nerf to Stonehill from for Paladin. This one? Oh, because you don't get. Uh, oh, sorry, we we're talking about Anoya module. Yeah. You don't get yeah. Tarim, Tyrion, or. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. 
Yeah, but I still think it's actually a really good card to get, though. Yeah, yeah, it's still good, but it's still yeah, good. you you know it's a you know it's pretty bad when we're saying it's a nerf, but you still get a very good card. <laughs> that's all, yeah, that's all stupid broken it was already. Anyways, Stonehill number one, like like was arena card or whatever. Yeah. Um, okay, so Beryllium Nullifier. Uh, so this one you can't target it. It's expensive though. You know, I think this is the most expensive mech card we've seen. Uh, was is the eight? No, the eight eight is a mech too. So the ten mana thing, but. We're probably not going to even spend seven mana on that. Wait, no, wait, no, that was a druid card. Never mind. Um, yeah. So, anyways, this might be the most expensive mech card that we've seen, or one of the most expensive. And um, because of that, I feel like the magnetic aspect of it isn't as compelling. Even though the text is really cool, and then obviously the eight health is very uh, intriguing. But that's a lot. I mean, that's pretty much your turn if you do that. What do you guys um, think? I mean, I think with this card. It's so, it's very hard to say. So far, my first initial thought of this card is that it's weak, but we haven't seen, per se, a a good minion to stick this on, like a good um, frame bot, because I think if what you want with this is you want a taunt minion. Um, or you want something that's just overly powerful stat line. That way you just make a huge, huge minion that can't be answered. Because what makes me think that this card has some kind of hope is that recently Maligos Druids, and including myself, I brought this to Oakland, have been putting Tyrantis in their deck mm -hmm. lists. Yep. And the reason they do that is because it's very good in the mirror. Because your opponent physically cannot answer Tyrantis without going Mali double, uh, Mali double swipe or something like that. So if you're staring down a huge minion that most decks can't physically answer, and you just keep pushing damage away, and it appears that this can't be targeted by spells or hero powers if it's in... Well, I, what I would say, like, a reasonable range. Like, for instance, this seems pretty reasonable if put onto a, a large mech and then built up very big that can just keep whacking away at your opponent's face. It definitely has some potential there. The question is, what do you put this on right now? And the issue is we have no idea. So I think it could be strong. Gara? App um, applications of this? I wonder how many mechs every class will get. If it's just like let's say two, one legendary mech and one uh, common mech, then I I really can't see this card being played like in like yeah because you need to, other mechs to play in the deck right, so like a tempo mech for I really just I I I can see like a mech priest before I can see this mech warrior deck right now like at all it's like because yeah warrior has like these rush minions that you could potentially play in a, like a tempo. And it does these rush cards look very powerful, and you still can't build like a viable deck with it. Yeah, so like I think mech tempo warrior is like very far away from being viable. Uh, but yeah, if you get the fact of, I think almost every class can answer this except mage very well. You you have the voodoo dolls, but <laughs> it's, it's basically a card that just pisses off mage. I think it's just too hard to pull it off, and it's then yeah, probably still not like powerful enough. It, it's it's better to, I think, these like. Tempo synergy decks are much better with like early in the game. If you go like curb out one, two, three, four, uh, then like a clunky minion, like, because you want to like play this in tempo curve and yeah, it seems like yeah. too slow and you probably can answer it. It's, I feel like, like just from experience, I feel like Warrior keeps getting cards like this. <laughs> like they keep getting cards that have like a large amount of health and like not very much of a threat. You know, obviously, this is a little different because you can actually buff stuff with it. But it's always like seven mana and eight mana and and this real awkward mana, you know, play for for warriors. So I hope they get something to play with this because that would just be like another expansion where they just like completely miss out on the theme of the the expansion. You know, like we we had what the cannon tower last time and we had uh geo sculptor. Yep, like previously like none of those cards are, are are really that great you know maybe it's like good it's... to get it from vogue cleaver or something because you get it for free oh, yeah but that, that's like the only way that even those cards even worked why right? it was getting vogue cleaver so this isn't any different than those cards and i think this is even worse yeah. because you have to play max like so um i don't know like i'm a little concerned with warrior like we we were about to talk about another card that's i, I think a bit better but still like from a minion standpoint i'm still a bit concerned about that. I was hoping to see more like early game stuff or stuff that would, I don't know, go a little bit better with rush, you know, warrior type of stuff. But um, 
this isn't it. <laughs> this is definitely, this doesn't go on. Most those rush minions don't, aren't even mechs. So, um, anyways, moving on, we've got a shaman card. That's a two mana, two, two. It's a common menacing Nimbus and battle cry. Speaking of more than one shutter walk, <laughs> you had a random <laughs> elemental to your hand. So you've got a chance. You've always got a chance to get another one of those bad boys with this. Um, you know, for the most part, it's a it's a cycle. You get an extra card, right? So um, elementals right now in Shaman are quite strong. So you're you're, you're probably going to have like a fifty percent chance of getting something pretty solid. Uh, what do you guys think? Does Shaman need a card draw like this? Could I, I want to start because I want to like quote some guy from Half Pawn, which okay. I find quite hilarious. He he said like, oh, a lot of people are underestimating this card. I think. This card is gonna be good. Well, this card is absolutely broken. Obviously, <laughs> it's like it's it's freaking the best two drop. It's it's insane. It will definitely push even shaman. You already play like you started playing Kalimos, I think, in even yep. shaman, and yep. obviously you have like insane elemental synergy, and you can play an even shaman as well. Like so, it will be even stronger. Mm. It's just a very very powerful card. Obviously, the word random is horrible. You can get a like, very trashy. Elemental or just exactly mm -hmm. the uh, elemental you need, like another Kalimos or like infinite this guy. But this is just super powerful. Like for two mana, you basically, yeah, it's just good, super good. You get like another elemental, it's, it's, it's so good. Yeah, it's like hydrologist, but you get minion, you get a minion, minion. right? Instead, Dr. J, uh, yeah, it's good. I don't know, I want to call this card bad. Because I don't like it, but uh, it's probably good. No, it's not even the word random. I just think so. Two mana two two is not like that great on stat line. I don't think it fits what even Sean wants to do. But it is just one of those cards that like it's just two mana two two that draws a card. I mean, we saw cards like Dark Peddler that was really good. We just seen cards in the past that just do that ability and it's very strong. I I'm kind of I kind of want to argue with you on even Shaman though because I think even Shaman is one of those decks that relies on tempo swings. And this card does not provide a tempo swing whatsoever. Um, I think you'd rather have cards like Primal Fin, Flame Tongue, Dire, Wolf Alpha. Um, I mean, the cards they have now are just fine in the two drop slot. I think what they're missing is a more solid four drop package. Uh, but I do think this card is solid. I wouldn't be surprised if it sees play. But as of right now, I don't think it's like honestly that strong of a card. I think it does have a lot of potential though, because two mana two to draw a card is just strong in general. It's a weird. I'm indifferent on this card. I, I I can see it seeing play, but as of right now, I don't think it will see play. I'm I'm kind of in between both of you guys. I think it's, I, I think it's for, for the value that you get from it, it's like really good. No no question. But the random side of it, if it was discover, it'd just be literally one of the best cards. But it be it's not it's not discover. So random, looking at just the the entire list, you know, like like again, I think you have. Probably a little bit, I think over 50% chance that you'll probably get something, you know, above or average or above. And then, like, you know, the rest of it is below average. Um, but, you know, the fact that you get below average, it's potentially a card that you just don't even use at all. Like, especially if you're playing, like, even Shaman. So, um, yeah, it's it's a good card, though. It's it's cool that Shaman got something like that just to, um, you know, just to, it, it's not going to be played in Shutterwalk, I don't believe. Uh Right? Do you get? I mean, no, you Shutterwalk can't even fit this. Your hand and you can't bounce yeah, them back. You can't. Or it would be you bad. can't fit. I mean, you, you probably can't fit a card like this in there, anyways. So, um, yeah, interesting for maybe just more of a straight type of elemental deck, maybe. Um, all right. So next up, we've got. Oops, showing the same ones. How about that? Um, okay. So we've got some some of these. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of druid and a little bit of warrior here. So we've got a 10 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. It's got it's definitely a candidate for, for name of the expansion, Mulch Muncher. <laughs> and Rush costs one for uh, one less for each friendly Treant that died this game. And it's also a mech. So um, you want about Treants. Obviously, Treants are if you look at landscaping, landscaping is a three-mana spell that creates a uh, you know two tree two two treants. And Treants are created by several of the uh, the cards, right? We've got um, Force of Nature. Force of Nature creates Soul three of them. Soul of the Forest, right? Uh, uh, there's the Applewood Trents that just give you Treants. Um, the two yeah, mana card that just gives you three. The, yeah, yeah. So, that one, 
There's got to be more. I think there's going to be more things that give you it to you just because. Yeah, scenarios create. Yeah, scenarios does create trance. Okay, it does give you two, two. Yeah, uh, perfect, gives you yeah. two, two, twos at time. Yeah, I'm yeah. I think if there's anything else off the top of my head, not that I can currently yeah. think of, but I'm sure there might be like one or two more that there, there's out there. Actually, let me see. Like they, they had them listed out. Um, did you say solo the forest? Yeah, he said solo. I did say solo forest. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a list of all. all That's kind of broken. Cards. By the way, if you go whispering wood solo the forest. Solo oh, forest, poison you get seed seven in the wild. and then it becomes a three mana. Yeah, poison, poison seed in the wild. wild. That's yeah. actually insane. Yeah, but you know it, it is pretty insane. But you have to play it's, some of those cards, right? Like they're. Yeah, there's no deck I can think of that plays whispering woods. And solo <laughs> no, no, whispering wood. No, you're talking about just with soul of force. Yeah, yeah, sure. The soul of force. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking about like force of nature and like which wood apple and. I can't wait. I can't wait for yeah. mulch muncher mirrors, where you just you just you just you just play your mulch muncher and you value trade into a I, into a trant and then you I, 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 because it, mulch. <laughs> because it is also a mech and it will have, be like a zero mana eight eight. If there's some crazy thing, you can magnet magnetize it on like some stealth. Yeah. You can give it life shield. The uh, you can give it life shield, divine shield, taunt. <laughs> Some crazy <laughs> stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's Rush, though, you know, so it's, you know, it's kind of like... Oh, Rush as well. That's pretty yeah, cool. it's Rush, too, which is, I mean, you don't really want that 8-8 that's a Rush. You know, it's, it's kind of like the Raptor, I guess, right? Um, it's Tempo. Tempo is broken. Or the... You will just play a zero yeah. mana eight eight. And that's I mean, it's a zero mana eight eight. That's the best way to look at it, right? Like, I, I think. <laughs> but it takes a while to set up the zero mana eight eight issue I'm having, and then it, it yeah. depends on these other trance card it, are. Like landscaping, I think is okay, and I think we were talking about it earlier. I think it's like decent, but the yeah. I don't like the two mana two three. I think that card's kind of weak. In my oh, opinion. you're talking about the rest of these? Yeah, yeah. I guess well, I said Raptor. I mean, I'm in Devil Sword when I was saying Raptor. I don't know why I said Raptor. Uh, yeah, the, the Dendrologist. It's supposed to be kind of like the hydro, Hydrologist, right? But yes. in the end, it's like there's a prerequisite that kind of sucks, which is like you have to have a Triant to actually discover yeah, spell. I'm pretty sure that people will try to absolute minimize the Triant count or the Triants you have to play in the deck mm -hmm. just so you reduce this card and, you know, yeah. play this like a broken, like, Two zero mana eight eight yeah temple whatever. I, I just can't wait to to hear you have to say mulch muncher like one of these days when you're you're uh, casting. That's gonna be great. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna love it. I mean, like the mulch, mulch muncher, muncher mirror the floop, mastered yeah. by. You know, you're gonna say the mulch muncher mul munching on something, for sure, right? You gotta promise me you're gonna say that one. My mulch muncher munch. There you go. Oh my god. Okay. Magnetically. Magnetically. <laughs> magnetized. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, this set's gonna be great. <laughs> I can already oh tell. Oh my god. <laughs> Did I skip this one? No, I think I might have skipped this one somehow. Um all right, so I think this is the last card. Is that right? Let There's no see. dendrologist. I don't think anyone's seen dendrologist. Oh, did did didn't I just show dendrologist? It's this one. No, you showed the warrior weapon and we didn't even talk about it. Oh, 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 sorry. Like, I think I... Okay, let's 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 bring that button. Dendrologist is like... <laughs> Tempo was like, this is bad, let's move on. Yeah, it's yeah, bad, let's yeah. move on. <laughs> well, yeah, like, what the heck am I doing, man? Like, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll get Dendrologist on here, too. Like, I'm, I'm like, so confused Fila. today. Okay, so we can... Uh, all right, let's talk about the, the Super Collider, given that we haven't... Uh, it was on here before. So it's the five-mana warrior card. It's a one-attack, three-durability epic. After you attack a minion... Force it to attack one of its neighbors. And this is, um, you know, I, I guess a, j just so it's clear, like it, you're, the actual minion that you, you end up hitting will attack and take damage from whatever he ends attack. So the example was like two mountain giants next to each other. So you attack one mountain giant, he turns around and hits his buddy next to him, and then they kill each other. You know, so that, that's like a very optimal scenario for it. <laughs> Um, happens every time. Yeah, but it's you know if he has two neighbors and it's random, right? As to like who he attacks, so that's kind of where it gets a little bit less effective uh, if if placement's there. But it it forces your opponent to like pay attention to to placement. So on top of you know like currently what we see with um, some of the uh, some of the different cards already, but th this just kind of enforces it even more. So um, yeah, I don't know, pretty pretty cool card, but. It's just like one of those things again. It's like Warrior does Warrior even need this card? I mean, they have like so many ways right now of just like removing stuff that I, I don't think that they needed something like this.
Gar, you want to start this one? Dr. J, go ahead. You know, okay. Uh, Gar has nothing say, to Gar, say about he it. He was that's waiting why. to talk that's about like, this cut. Yeah, uh, that's, that's why I was going to end with him. So, but, you know. <laughs> um, I think it's cool in odd cost control warrior. I think maybe it has some implications there. Other than that, it seems fairly weak because if your opponent knows you're playing it or sees it, it's easy to play around. I mean, obviously, when you play against Warrior, you can just play around it, even if you don't know it's in the deck. Like it's it, You can play around it. It's five mana for a one through weapon, which does not... I, I don't like that stat line. And then, yeah, a lot of times, it's like it doesn't appear to be that good. I could be wrong, though. Eh, the mechanic's kind of interesting. I definitely like the flavor of the card, but I just don't think it's that good. You get to do it three times. So, I mean, even if you miss the first time, it's not the end of the world, right? Like... Where if you had a spell that did had this kind of effect, it would you know it'd be definitely much more you know expensive or less enticing. This card kind of reminds me of Icebreaker from Shaman. It's like yeah. you mm, don't want to yeah. take the face damage, even though you're like probably like Baku Control Warrior. Uh, you still don't want to like face tank three giants in like yeah. the most optimal case. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, and like you said, Warrior has so many ways of removing stuff. Is this really what Warrior needs? Like a five mana weapon that That's what removes I said. Another stuff weapon. That, <laughs> where the opponent can play around as well. Yeah. Like you can just position the minions. And even if he has a min like two minions next to each other, it's still random then. And I'm pretty sure like you will lose some games because you know you just hit the wrong minion, not the right minion. And... I just like Warrior to get like a solid mid minion you know just something good you know like in that five man range a shield maiden no I want no, a shield no maiden. not a shield maiden nothing that gives armor i just want like a really good minion like an ally so, armor smith or like, something. yeah like an ally armor, <laughs> smith. That's armor what I want. Smith. yeah 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 okay just, just honestly throw that back in as one of the slots <laughs> and that'd be fine let's give us like we have this thing. new card it's ally armor smith number two and, it's and, shield, maiden. Line. <laughs> and shield maiden number two <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, so, I don't know i just you know we'll, we'll see i don't want to judge it too early but i don't know man it's feeling like we're we're whiffing again for for warrior here and that's the warrior right now looks pretty good. not don't not you worry good. they got they got Doc, what is it, dr boom whatever the new God. class card it's gonna be broken yeah, gonna dr be boom's gonna be card. the new dr boom so v2 broken. is like a warrior only card it's I gonna. That's say, how you fix the glass. It's gonna be ten mana. You're gonna slam it. It's gonna be like your Warsaw oh. Commanders are now unnerfed, and you have patron in your deck. Dude, it's gonna be a full board of <laughs> boombots. Oh a full board of boombots, and they hit like from one to eight damage. No, they hit eight to eight damage. <laughs> <laughs> they, they kill Azure Drake. They kill Let's, let's go. <laughs> all right, all right. So that's that's Super Collider. Um, all right, kind of Dendrologist. We were kind of talking about basically. Um, it's a two mana, two three battle cry. If you control a tree and discover a spell, uh, it's a rare card, and it's cool. You can discover a spell because you can discover UI if you want it or whatever you need. Just, you know, like. But how do you get? Can you even get a tree ant on turn two? Like, um, I mean, this makes me one think they're gonna print. Nah. Are they trans? Actually, right, are living right? roots trans? I I think they're like. I have no clue no, what they are. No, they're not. I don't. I don't think. Um, no. but I I wouldn't be surprised if they printed a one mana two two trant for druid or a neutral card, just so you could go one mana two drop. You could discover the three drop and you could play that like and then you keep going. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, maybe there's something in the future. Um, As of right now, I don't think it's that. Yeah, it's strong. like it's it'd only be good if you could you could actually play this on turn two with a tree on yeah. the board, and then that but would the that thing, actually would be broken <laughs> like crazy good. Yeah, the, uh, the only thing about this is like may, uh, druid spells are really good. Yeah, they're like really good. Well, I mean, I think druid spells are really good when they're combined together. But like, let's say you play this, and your options are. Soul of the Forest, uh, Bark Skin, and then uh, Bite or Claw. I mean, that's bad. Like, that's pretty bad. But, like, the reason Druid spells are so strong is because they're good when you put the specific ones in your deck because they're extremely powerful yeah. and then they're good in combination with others. Whereas, like, you could find one of the pieces but already have that piece and you're missing the other piece. 
So it's definitely hit or miss with this card. It could be really powerful. Like you could just get a third there's Savage Roar. Yeah, there's. I feel like. I mean, I feel like there's a good chance that. I mean, you got three ch shots at it, right? There's a good chance you're going to get one that you that's need, fair. or I mean, it's not even one that's in your deck. You could just get one period that you could need. Like a third soul of the forest, right? And then you know, third nobody soul of the forest, period. branching paths, like you know, whatever, nur even nourish. And I mean, there's there's a lot of different things you could get Gross. right now. Yeah, there's not that many bad spells right now uh, for for Druid. You know, I'd have to like really take yeah, a look. I don't know. I think there is a there's couple a bad spells, spells. Like, just don't play them. Like for instance, you can get Moonfire. Bark skin, claw, bite, uh, Nash. Uh, I mean, bite and Nash, uh, but those first two are actually spells in certain anymore. decks right now. So, right? Like, That's okay, true. Nash but you and bite, play sure. Them I'll give in you those, the deck that but... plays this. Yeah, yeah. It's just the, well, the, the drawback is just too, too, too huge. I think like mm -hmm. we had good two drops for for Druid before, but you always went back to playing Wycroft because it's just so much better. I think Druid just wants to wipe off turn two. Yeah. And, yeah. and you would want to play this in a deck like Spiteful Druid or like some freaking token Druid. I don't know. That doesn't. Yeah. I, it just doesn't fit well in the class. Ooh, Spiteful Druid against like Savage Roar now. That's the deck I want. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. Probably you have to get three hands out somehow without playing a spell. That's All when right. they print the one mana two two. We're fine. All right. We're we we say the best for last right here. Okay. So we've got four mana three four and yet another Druid card. <laughs> like legendary one it's flabidinous floop which is another tongue twister which is going to be great watching people have to say that but <laughs> while in your hand this is a three four copy of the last minion you played so um it's got that kind of you know camellius or whatever you know like it actually changes into whatever card you know like the the following or every time you play a card it turns into basically the minion you know that you you played so People thinking about Malagus, you know, you play a Malagus, the thing turns into like basically a, a, a Malagus, uh, you know, with the text. And, um, you know, you're able to basically play Malagus for cheaper, you know, at least a part of Malagus that you really care about, which is the the effect. Uh, and I mean, I, th I think there's a lot of applications of this, whether it's like high end or even just kind of moderate. This, this card is super flexible. So um, what are the kind of abusive things that you guys see from this card? Hydronox. Hydronox is eh, Hydronox. We were talking about that earlier, right? Hydronox usually comes out with Okinar, right? So no, no. If you I mean, like, if you think about it, it stays the last card you played. So if you play Hydronox and then it gets polymorphed, can't you just play a four mana Hydronox the next turn and cube it? It was the last minion you played. Yes, that is how it works. That's broken. Yeah. I mean, you can That's get another like... Hydronox, but generally you don't play Hydronox, right? So. In this it case, cares. I guess you, you would. Yeah, I guess in this case you would just it's play. It's broken. I, I think. Yeah, the, the, I think. I mean, I think that's good. I think the issue with it is though is that typically the deck runs Oaken Summons and Master Oakheart, which can pull this card. So I think that's kind of like a hindrance, but I still think it's like powerful. I think the best implication for this card is currently Mali Druid because there's so many good cards you can copy in Mali Druid that just makes so much sense. And even if you don't like copy it, you can just play it as a format three four against Aggro. Yeah. Which is solid, which is like sometimes better than Twig because you just can test the board better. And then also, um, you can play like a new list of Mali Druid where maybe I don't know what the three drop slots are in Mali Druid right now. I think it's just Ferocious Hal. But you can even mm -hmm. go Prince Tolderum route and you can play Maligos. You can then play this next Oh turn, my Prince god, Tolerum that's crazy. And deal a lot of damage. That's crazy. I mean, that's like. What is that? That's like twenty. Wait, how many? How much damage is that? It's, it's not six, more six. because you could already play double faces or Taldrum faceless. Oh. But, but but it buffs the Taldrum. Oh. Yeah. Taldrum plus this plus inner weight because then you can play, uh, swipe, and plus double moonfire and that. Or is it means you don't have to play faceless in your deck anymore, because um, because faceless is obviously very clunky and more. Uh, it's like heavier. It's so fifty one damage. It's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's it's enough to win. <laughs> that's all that yeah, matters. Yeah, it's more than 30. That's all that matters. More than 30. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, so yeah, this card I think is one of the strongest cards, if not the strongest card I've seen so far uh, from the expansion. And it, it's Druid. <laughs> so it's like... Yay! All right. Yeah, it's all right. Druid. Needed. Finally, the expansion of Druid will be good. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, like we sure needed this. I know. <laughs> we just need another arc. I'm just, you know what? I actually think there'll probably be another archetype that comes from it. I don't know exactly what it is, but you can probably play yeah. next druid. You know what you do? You play spiteful druid. summoner like druid. <laughs> you, this is another spiteful summoner. You just, you just play spiteful summoner. No, 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 just keep four minutes <laughs> spiteful summoner. <laughs> Just keep throwing those down, baby. Oh my like, god! It's just or or you go uh, you go vicious fledgling, and then when vicious fledgling dies, you play this as a three four vicious fledgling. Yeah, that's pretty good. Just play two summoners I mean, oh. see, that's what I mean. It's like there's all these applications of it. It's so versatile. That my favorite is the arcane tyrant one. Hey, arcane tyrants do pretty good too. You play a three four zero, right? Like it's just like, it's all good. I mean, it. it Anyways, yeah, there's there's a lot of ways to play this. I, I think that it's like an auto add, um, you know. Even if like, oh, it's not perfectly. Yeah, you can play a four mana hetcher as well. A what? Like a dragon hetcher. Or like yeah, another no, no, dude, you can play yeah. Okar. You can play hatch. Every single big druid what? and and the uh, taunt druid, broken. yeah, minion can can be enhanced by this. I mean, it's just it's, so it's just broken. insane. I mean, the only the only Omar you know King. only bad things are what Doctor J said. It's just like the Oaken summons and and you have to wait on Okar. Uh, you know, Oaken oh, art. Uh, so. No, it's, it's because the thing is, if you play Master Okar, you just win. Everyone knows that. Like even if you pull hard rock, so oh, boo -boo, so if you, you play two, you just super win. <laughs> you just ultra win. <laughs> Stupid man. <laughs> like, what? You just win. Yeah, I, just yeah, win, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, see, really interesting cards, though. At least you know, like, a, lot, yeah. a lot of things to talk about. But you know, we'll see if they're they're good or not. Like the mechanic, like the mechanics are at least trying. You know, like even with super collider, it might not be good, but. They're clearly taking into account like positioning even more, and and with the the whatever the floop, we're we're talking about just even sequencing of cards, and you know that's another element that we don't have we don't really do that much of right now, right this second, right? Like where a value of a card is dependent upon upon the sequence of of how you're playing it. So, um, you know that, that I think that could be pretty interesting too. And we're just the beginning. This is like how many cards? I mean, we've probably only seen like fifteen cards right so far. Something like that. We have not seen that many. Yeah, we haven't even seen that many. Okay, so it might be, yeah. So we, we've got at least a hundred cards coming. So it's gonna yeah, be a lot. an amazing. I, I'm sure next week is going to be crazy. Oh, and I'm not even sure I'm gonna be here next week. We might have to do that show early, Gara, because I'm. I think so I'm next week is no. Uh, next week is Seed Story Cup. I, I'm traveling on Wednesday. Oh yeah, so, so maybe we can do it early. I'm I'm traveling too to to New York. Maybe on Tuesday. Overwatch stuff. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe we might have to do the a value ton on Tuesday uh, next week, guys. So just kind of give you a heads up before we actually say this at the very end, where some of you guys aren't <laughs> going to be here. Um, but uh, I spent a lot of time on that. Let's kind of move through. Um, before we do, I just want to give a shout out to a bunch of our patrons that support the show. I just want to remind folks that not only is uh, the show at you know hsreplay.net show. Uh, which means that Value Town is a re HS Replay show. It's not just like sponsored. Some people think it's actually sponsored, but no, no, no. It's actually HSReplay.net. So um, that's why we talk about it so much on the show and, and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, also, you know, we're obviously supported by the patrons too. And that doesn't change. Like we still, it still matters a lot to us guys. Um, so I uh, want to thank the patrons that support the show each and every week because you guys are amazing. And there are a lot of people that have been longtime patrons. Mike T, our legendary producer, of course. Devin Y, Engine S, Raydan, Feldy Fox, Old Man Riv, Johnson C, Vince F, Nicholas B, Eric C, Davisaurus, Juan P, and Nick B. Thanks so much, guys. You guys are, I mean, some of these people have been patrons for like years now and like they continue doing it. In, in, Seriously, we'd not, we wouldn't be able to do the show without you guys. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, love the show, go and, you know, take a look at the Patreon at patreon.com slash Valley Town and make a pledge because uh, it really, really helps us out. All right, HCT Oakland, why don't we just kind of cover that and do Q&A uh, pretty quickly here. But Dr. J, you're at HCT, obviously huge win for Tere. I mean, we're, you know, I think a lot of people, especially in NA, you could kind of tell just how, how everybody kind of grouped around him at the end of it, too. And a lot of, like, very familiar faces in LA, in NA, you know, congratulating him and stuff. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about one of the old guards of NA. I mean, he mm -hmm. he is the guy that is always there. just like, you know, you don't hear about Teray all year, and then all of a sudden he's there, like, at the very end. And you're like, man, Teray's, like, literally in, in contention, you know, for... For world championships or whatever every single year and um it was really cool you know finally seeing him you know like at the forefront winning an event 
and just kind of hearing him. I, I thought his interview was like one of the most endearing things, you know, I've, I've seen, you know, just in terms of the interviews, period, in HTT this year. So, uh, Dr. J, you finished top 32 in, in the tournament. So, overall, how was the event? You know, maybe even talk about, you know, are you good? You're good friends with Trey. So, like, how, how was, you know, uh, this man yeah. and everything? Um, so it's, I met Tere a long time ago, back, um, in winter, mm -hmm. um, when we played against each other for the playoffs and like the top four. And then we went and hung out, um, at winter where he almost made it, um, back to worlds. He was one game off and I, you could just tell that he is one of those players that obviously he's been in this game so long, but he is just, he's just so knowledgeable of the game and he understands everything he wants to do. And he's just such one of the best technical players I've ever seen. I do think he does make um, – he made, like, a couple mistakes on stream, but he's also yeah. just a very nervous guy. That's part of his personality. He's just a great guy to be around. He's very – he's very – he second-guesses his plays, which I actually think makes him very strong as a player. Like, he never says, like, my line is the definitive best line. He always sits there and evaluates every single line and then comes to a conclusion of what he thinks is the best. And even after the game, when the line could have just been – Hero power on right. two with nothing else at hand. He's like, did I want a hero power on two? I don't know. Maybe not. And he's just very knowledgeable. He's a great guy to be around. He really deserved this. I know a lot of people in the Hearthstone scene. He has been in here so long and has done so much for the scene. Yeah. And has just been one of the best players for such a long time that I think this is just a long time coming for him. And I'm really glad he got his win. I'm really glad uh, just to get to hang out with him that weekend. It was great. Gary, do you know Terreno? I, I, I forget if you do or not. Of not really. course I have to. Oh, you the do. whole Magic Amy thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That's, see, that's the one thing that people remember about Terre, and, and that's a shame, too, because he's been such a great... He's been such a great player for a long time. Everybody brings up that that whole meme and scenario. I never, I never so. met him, though, like, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because he's not... I think he, have ne he has never been to Europe. I don't think he's ever been no. to a European no. tour stop or anything. Yeah. Which is kind of sad. I guess because he's another great player. I would like to. Well, meet, he's, like, all but the, he's always part timed players. it, right? Like Therese always been splitting time, never full time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's he's kind of crazy. Yeah. He, so he's been this this good just playing like half time, and you know he said in his interview, I remember this too. Like one of the reasons why, like uh, I think Tere, like a lot of people didn't hear about Tere or see, even though a lot of players do know Tere, uh, is just that he generally played by himself. I think for a long time, yeah. you know, he practiced by he like he literally came up with everything himself. And it wasn't until recently I think he's he's really seen the value and the I don't know, maybe even camaraderie aspect of, of you know just having more of the you know the playing community practicing with with him and and bouncing ideas off of him. So um, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's definitely kind of see, cool seeing you know somebody that was known for as being a loner to you know like really being part of the the community now and. Yeah, he's he's just really happy. So overall, I think a lot of you know people are just like you, Doctor J. They're like, yeah, it's great that he he finally got one, and you know he's pretty much gonna. I think he's setting himself pretty well to be at the end. You know, like at least in contention again at the end. Like he always seems to be. He's never really made it too far in the the end, but he's always like top sixteen or you know top thirty two or something. I'm talking about like the very end, guys. So um, you know, pr pretty cool. How was the event overall, though, Doctor J? Like. Uh, esports arena i mean there was it, it was it's part of it every time i would look at one side of the camera it was like are they in a mall and then it's like no 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 they're actually in the esports arena because i could see like people like walking you know back there but um yeah how was it because i usually do a pretty good job with events yeah i like the venue um i thought it was ran fairly smooth overall it was a couple hiccups at the very beginning mm -hmm. but i feel like that's I, I, unfortunately for our HTT tour stop i feel like at the very beginning there's a couple hiccups from what i've noticed um, but other than that, it wasn't, it honestly wasn't that bad. It was like pretty good overall, smoothly ran from what I would say, not too many issues, at least on like when I was playing or on my behalf. Um, I, my favorite thing about it was actually the production value for the stage where they were doing commentary work. I thought that looked so nice and so good. Oh, you mean great. with the TVs in the background? Yeah, and, with yeah, like yeah. all that in the stage and then the, mm -hmm. the casting commentary work. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really great. Um... I thought overall it was a decent event. It wasn't. Uh, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say it was one of the best events, but I would definitely say it's. It was good. Like it's getting there. I think over time, if these events keep happening, especially if uh, HCT gets or um, esports arena gets to run them, they will definitely be at the works of like DreamHack level. Um, but I, yeah, I thought it was good overall, um, okay. and it was solid, and I enjoyed myself. Yeah, that's. 
Yeah, I think overall is solid. The viewership was really low for it. I have to say, I don't know why it was like if it was. I think it was because it, it was on the esports um, channel, right? If it's yeah, on the Play Hearthstone true. channel, it instantly gets boosted well, up just on the point. fact that it's on the Play Hearthstone channel. Yeah. So I think for being on the esports arena channel, it was pretty decent. But then again, I wasn't paying attention to the viewership because, of course, I was playing, I was hanging out, I was talking to people. I wasn't really <laughs> focused on watching the the stream. Yeah. Yeah um so impact got to the end too it was kind of cool seeing those two guys going at each other at the very end two two guys have been in the na scene for a long time especially because it's in in, in my practice group yeah <laughs> someone's yeah, doing well for, in my in fact actually in gar in practice with gara regularly so what's up with that yeah what's up with that yeah but no you know you mentioned before tare tare actually brought um quest rogue which was one of the few that people brought and um, I mean, he plays it super well too, but I, I, I think that I didn't actually realize that Killen was, was, did Killen bring it or did he just think about bringing it? He brought it. Oh, he actually he brought, brought it. Okay, it was, yeah. um, yeah, um, it was him, to, it was him and, uh, Tare that brought it and okay. they both, uh, Killen did not do well, but yeah. he had aggro lineups. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's still, still in that lagger lineup, but, um, yeah. So pretty cool that quest rogue still has some viability, you know, against these kind of slower decks. Still makes sense. I mean, I, I think everybody knows that you know like generally from the standpoint of of how the the decks match up so actually seeing it in practice is, was a, a different thing to um we didn't see it at the end though that's what i was kind of bummed about that i think that his last two matches i don't i don't think he we we got a chance to see the quest rogue he was like banned yeah i was banned finals. both times yeah yeah it's like bang, dang everybody's just talking about it. we didn't get a chance to, <laughs> i only saw it like once i think so um uh, so another good good stop. What's the next stop? Is what like Seed Story, right? Is the next the Seed Story is ACT, right? Or is it not? I forget. I mean, seed uh, seed story next week. Week. I yeah, know, but is so, it there's points there though, right? No, no. no? Oh, okay. Seed Story got just for fun. I know. I thought for some reason that there might be points available. That for, for, I mean, for, because yeah. they also organize an uh, ACT uh, qualifier. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah, that's TV for Germany. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The next, um, the next official tour stops are going to be, um, Japan Stock 16 will play out next weekend. Oh, right. Uh, right. The same time, I think, as Seed Story, um, and then after that, it's Taichung in Taiwan, which will be the weekend after that. Um, mix, then, nothing is this God, weekend. Crazy. Nothing is this weekend. Yes. What? You're slacking, Blizzard. What's up? <laughs> I, I, I never find we can't even keep What's up with that? all these, man. It's just this is a, like a lot. <laughs> like it's like it's a lot, but at the same time, it's it's kind of good. You know, like usually I'm not a real big fan of like oversaturation. Not if you're from Europe because yeah. you're forced to go to well, all of them. Okay. Yeah, but as a spectator, okay. <laughs> I think it's nice because we're starting to see this kind of consistency, right, in, in the people that are going. I don't think it's, like, set up to be, like, super consistent for the players. It just happens that these players are all the ones that are supported, too, you know, that, that can actually be able to go to all these. You know, they're on teams and whatnot. But but we are starting to see the, these kind of storylines, right? Like, we're, we're seeing these players getting more and more um, notoriety just because they're, they're there every single week. So um, I, it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing for the scene. And hopefully it continues. We'll, we'll see. By the end of the year, we'll see if anybody has any any of these teams have money left or <laughs> keep sending these players like to all around the world because it's definitely not cheap. Um, okay, why don't we do some Q and A here? We only got one here from Amiden for today. Um, the question is, what is the deck you refuse to learn or play for whatever reason? I have immediately one. Okay, which one? What rogue? I just what? can't get behind. What? I, I never, serious? I never, like, one game decks. Of oh my god, really? <laughs> oh man. It's like, really? Uh, That's such a. Okay. Why? It's like, Why? It's, Why? I, I can't see. Like when I do like a, a, a matchup sheet, sheet, I don't see what it beats. It only beats Murphy. It's everything. Yeah. I see people do well with it and I see it beats people everything. in the finals of tournaments, but I never lose need to, to it. play like, it more. It's really good. I played. I played my share of it too because I had, I I had this one stretch. It was like last week, where I kept getting rogue quests. <laughs> like it would just kept coming back with rogue quests, and I and for some reason I didn't want to recycle them. So I had like seven straight rogue quests or some crazy run like that. So I ended up playing odd, odd rogue like the entire time, but. 
uh that's kind of weird that you don't like that that's like no it's like i just can't get into that deck for some reason i don't know mm, okay uh how about you dr j any deck that you just like will just not not i mean you might play but you just won't put the whatever gara's favorite deck is because he heard me oh big spell mage there you go yo actually actually legitimately <laughs> big spell mage i hate that deck i think it's awful and i refuse to play it now i played it like the beginning and i was like this deck is just garbage and now I never play it. <laughs> I, oh, I cannot stand Big Spell Mage. I I think that deck is just absolutely awful. Yeah, yeah. We were testing. We were testing last night as even Warlock. If you could just literally never tap and take it to fatigue and beat it, and I'm pretty sure you can. Like you could just literally never hit the Hero Flower button as even Warlock, take it to fatigue, and just beat Big Spell Mage. I think that's how bad the deck is. Really? That is a pretty good DK. What? Because because that's um. That's what that's what Muzzy like. I don't I don't know, but Muzzy was talking about it, and Muzzy said that if you t if you can take Big Spell Mage to fatigue, and you can beat him fatigue because they have to generate water elementals, and you just you just hear power the water elementals over two turns, and you have answers for their threats. Like for instance, he runs double Argy Commander and uh, Tainted Zaylot. So Tainted Zaylot's an answer for Alana. The Argy Commander is just answer like water elementals, and they can't make uh, pings out of it. And then also. You have uh, Black Knight for Lich King, so the only card you have to worry about is Sindragosa. And then if you have like Spellstones or Hellfires and stuff, you can just answer that as well. And as long as you have Gul'dan early enough, or I, I don't even know if you need it early enough, but you just keep hero powering over and over, you should be able to beat him in fatigue. This is Vegara's wow. uh, deck building superties comes into place. We don't play garbage like Alana. We play Marin the Fox, and just get uh, the freaking monkey, and we have. <laughs> Turn all our unplayable <laughs> garbage cards into cool legendaries to just high roll our opponent and win. That's called Garb metagaming more <laughs> than that's actually <laughs> true playing there. I just don't like how Big Mage relies on one card so much. Like if like a lot of times if you don't have uh Frost such Jaina, you just yeah. lose. I call it decay stone. <laughs> no, yeah, like the game DK changes stone. as soon as both players play a DK. It might as well just be called Jaina the deck. Like the game, like all the other cards don't matter anymore. It all evolves around the DKs as soon as they're. I mean, it, it is it is the ult. It, I I mean, I, I think it's almost the quintessential control. I mean, outside of Shutterwalk, obviously, right? But it, it's like it's one of the the most quintessential control decks right now. It literally runs all the the removal, right? And you know, like every single board, you know, like or at least mass uh, minion type of removal. And um, Hunter Hunter versus Mage is like the best example. Like as soon yeah. as they play Rexa and you play Jaina, like everything else feels like it doesn't matter. It just comes down to those two cards. Yeah, but Rexar. Yeah. I mean, the Rexar depends a lot more. I think on you know just getting at least. I mean, I think Rexar needs some life ability, right? Like, mm, well, with Rexar, you could just you get a have Tundra a... Rhino with Stealth, and then. You just keep playing stealth minions until they can't do anything, and then you so just yeah, yeah, or like immune, like make big bear sharks. That's very hard to get rid of. Yeah. I know, but that's where all our G base, dude. Yeah, no, when oh, when really? I need when I need well, full rush and life steal, I don't get rush I mean, and life steal. Let's be real. I mean, that's kind dude. of true, but you have to understand <laughs> that the game, like neither deck is really doing anything. So as like neither deck is really doing anything, so you have the time to generate those beasts. Eventually, yeah. you will hit yeah. one. Um, whereas the mage is just looking at his hand of all removal and it goes hero power pass and you're yeah. just trying to make the beast stick on the board. Yeah. I had okay. a game where my opponent got three uh, rush uh, poisonous uh, blood bets in a row. And I, he basically that's killed insane. all my water elementals and that's, all my that's resources. Like, that's and then I couldn't yeah. generate water elementals anymore. And suddenly, like, it, it really literally went to fatigue last card. Yeah, like they just clear your board. I mean, out of I, I think it's interesting. I mean, it's cool that Muzzy, you know, can come up with a strategy like that and, and you know figure that out against that kind of deck. That's kind of problem solving thing. That's actually really cool. You know that that uh, you know. I don't know how you... efficient it is because I lost both games. I tried to do it, but I think it can't be done. <laughs> well, I think you have to you probably you probably have to know even the early turns like super well or like oh yeah exactly. you can't you can't take I don't think I knew this. it as well as Muzzy. Yeah. So I, I was trying to do it. Yeah. And I was like I took I took the big mage to eight fatigue and then i finally died but i think i obviously i played it wrong yeah. there's probably uh, yeah a turn or two you probably could have gotten less damn it took in less damage or something from i find it even yeah. cooler that i have like a counter to that do you, you have a counter to that yeah that's 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 literally the reason why i don't play a lot of why i play marine the fox 
because it just oh, gives you. You the seriously most play Mara and the Fox for like two what? months already. I wow. played the last three that. tournaments. You didn't tell me that. I didn't. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't realize you played Mara. That's dude. the reason. Like, you, yeah. like because high legend players, like top ten legend players, they play really, really good. I think every top t- like. A lot of people give uh, even lock a lot of like crap that it's like a bad deck. Like people don't bring it to tournaments and whatnot. But if you face like top ten legend even lock players, you realize that there's the deck a is lot insane. of skill. Oh, it's yeah, very very skill good. matters yeah. a yeah. lot. Yeah. You can play the deck in so many different ways. Like 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 Jay said, like you can just fatigue. Like you don't expect to be fatigued, you know, out of nowhere. You just you don't usually play mm-hmm. the deck that way. And then you just have to like. Well, you can play even lock in. I mean, even lock can kind of feel controlly in a lot of in a lot of instances, and it can be be very you know more aggressive. So yeah, you can actually see that a lot in the pro play, like where where people know the matchups and they know how they have to play it. So that's cool that you play Marin, man. That I didn't actually know you actually played Marin. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. I never get any good from Marin, man. Yes, that's good. Late it's game like, parts of the game right now, besides Sindra Goza late game. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just gonna say that much. I mean, that they're great though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, you still got when you got cards that like infinitely draw. I mean, that, that you're not gonna. Oh, all four outcomes are good. That's the thing. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I don't know the HS replay stats because they're behind closed doors, but I'm pretty sure there is different percentage on all the outcomes. I'm pretty sure we get yeah, there draw one card that gives you like infinite copies is like the rarest one. Oh, you're talking about just like the percentage that draws oh, yeah. i mean i can check for you but i'm almost sure yeah. those were i think i think we might have checked it at one point no i didn't i never checked marin i checked something else I'm, for somebody i'm pretty yeah. sure you get the monkey most of the time mm-hmm. but yeah the, all the, all the outcomes you play all the outcomes in a different way yeah. but you can abuse them like that they just give you basically infinite value to win the game like yeah. if you fill your hands with any card if it's not a card or card, it's just game winning. Like you get infinite Janas, infinite polymorphs, infinite, okay. not infinite, but six or seven copies. That's like game winning. Okay. Uh, but yeah, might if you were summoned f- two legendaries, the, the fox, the fox. Yeah. So for me, I haven't answered this question. So for me, it's been Shutterwalk. I'm usually honest. Like what? I just don't play Shutterwalk. <laughs> like, I mean, I see it enough because I play against it so much that I just like, I have like zero interest in like playing it very much. So. Uh yeah, <laughs> that's definitely mine. I was I was having a hard time thinking about one outside of that one. Like there usually you know in the past there was, but what ends, usually ends up com- happening to me is I, I usually come around the very end when nobody like likes to play it anymore, and then that's the time I'll start playing it. And so that's that happened to me with like you know um just uh what should I call it uh you know Shadow Reaper Priest and ju- you know just all the super popular powerful decks. I usually end up playing it like super super late because. I'm just hipster that way, you know. It's, yeah, it's... Sharon's a hipster Hearthstone player. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, well, I think that's uh, I think that's all we got for Q and A. Um, uh, but uh, again, just want to remind you guys that next week we will we'll try to do one earlier because I think me and Garo are going to be gone like basically the, the Wednesday and the latter part of the week. So we'll try to get one in by then. Pretty much short turnaround. Hopefully, we'll have some cards to talk about by then. But um, I imagine there'll at least be a, a few, and if not, we'll we'll figure out what to do. <laughs> we'll fill the fill the time somehow. But Dr. J, thanks for man coming by. It's always fun, uh, especially getting a chance to talk cards with you because it, it feels like we've, we've gotten a chance to talk a lot of cards like the last couple of expansions with you. So it's been been a good time. <laughs> top four, top four, easy, right? Yeah, it's, uh, easy. <laughs> top four points, points, easy. A top four top points. Four. Easy. <laughs> you're in NA, you're fine, dude. Four points is amazing. I don't right? know. I'm struggling out here. <laughs> I need a yeah. top fifty or top twenty-five, so we're struggling. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, any? Come uh... here to Europe, then you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine <laughs> in the North America. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am perfectly fine. I introduce here. you to struggle. Introduce you to struggle. Uh, but you want to do some shout outs before we take off? Uh, I mean, shout outs to, to Tare for winning his tournament. Yep. That's just great on him. Other than that, I don't really have anything. I appreciate Chaman for obviously having me on. It's always great to be on the show. I always love it. It's always great to talk about cards and then just talk about what's going on in Hearthstone because obviously I love this scene so much. So thank you, Chaman. I really appreciate it. Other than that, yeah. that's about it. All right. Yeah. Always a pleasure having you on, man. Gara, how about you? Um, as always, I'm really enjoying doing the show. I like talking about Hearthstone. I feel like more than playing the game. Oftentimes, I don't know why. I just like talking about it. Um, 
good to be back once again. Like I was gone for like three weeks, you know. Now I feel like I'm Dude, you were like back here in the last routine. week. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, but now I'm like the routine of doing it weekly. Yeah, you know? yeah. And but maybe we, <laughs> we will be gone next. No, week. no, we're doing <laughs> it next week. So it's like we just we just won't be doing it at the same time. It. Yeah, we're we're do- no, we're we're doing it on Tuesday, dude. I'm going to be uh, going okay. Wednesday too, so we have to do it early. Uh, All right, we'll do it. We'll yeah. do it. It's going to be a lot of fun, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's not the schedule. I'm pretty sure there will be like a bunch of cards. Yeah. If not, yeah. you know, maybe we just do a giant Q&A. So, I mean, we always have Q&A for any questions you guys got, so we'll do something. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, That'll be cool. Yeah, uh, I'll round things up. Just again, of course, thanking the two of you guys for doing the show today. All the folks for joining us on this Thursday, and you know, hopefully, you got the message that it wasn't going to be yesterday. Uh, but you can find the show as usual on all the audio channels like iTunes and Google Play and uh, Spotify and SoundCloud.com slash HeyManB. Just search for Value Town or search for Hearthstone. You'll see us. If you like the show, be sure to you know also leave a review like on those channels. So helps us out and, or helps people find Value Town if they're looking for a Hearthstone podcast. And then you can find this VOD on youtube.com slash net or on Chairman B, either one right now. So whichever one you, you'd like prefer, go to the HS Replay one, just like start subscribing there because eventually we are going to just kind of move it completely over. But for now, um, you know, we're still doing that. And then, um, yeah, just go to hsreplay.net for all your greatest stats and and uh, keep a lookout for uh, any any news on our card reveal i'll give you i'll be you know letting you guys know some more details in the coming future but it's going to be going to be fun and uh you know it's going to be it's awesome of blizzard to to give us that opportunity but that's going to be it guys oh one last thing um we did a streamer showdown yesterday the vod's up on youtube.com slash go watch that it was a lot of fun with uh uh, disguise toast trump and and pothra so uh, if you didn't catch it go there check it out and uh yeah that's going to be it, guys, for Value Town this week. So, for Dr. Jikaniki, Gara, and myself, Cham MV, we'll see you next week. 